Welcome to International Love Story, a podcast about long distance and multicultural relationships. My name is Christina and in this episode I'm going to talk to a breakup coach. Her name is Natasha. And if you're going through a rough breakup or you're thinking of ending a relationship or you are in a stage at your life where you don't really see yourself happy, um, this episode might help you to take the next steps and most importantly to start taking care of yourselves. But we're also going to talk about what can trigger you to be in a toxic relationship, for example. This conversation with Natasha contains a few triggers. So before listening to this episode, make sure to check out the side notes. And after reading them, consider for yourself if you'd like to listen to this episode. Or maybe you would just like to listen to parts of it. Okay, and with this being said, I would like to welcome Natasha. Natasha, as mentioned, is a breakup coach. She is specialized on breakups and we're going to have a little talk about a few very important topics. Thank you so much for your time, Natasha, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for today's episode. I'm excited too. It's great to finally have a face to the voice. <laughs> so thank you so much again. And yeah, for everyone who's listening, what is a relationship coach, especially a breakup coach, exactly doing? Yes, I'm a breakup and reinvention coach. So I help women and men navigate through the heartache of being in either three positions of the breakup, because the, the first position is essentially when you've broken up, you're going through that trauma, you're really having that heartache, then you're sort of navigating through the dating scene. And you're not quite sure what's going on, you're attracting the wrong kinds of people. And then you're potentially in a brand new relationship. But actually, you haven't healed what's gone on in your previous relationship. So you're taking all the baggage, all the fear, all the resentment, all the rejection into this new loving relationship, which could potentially be your future. So what I do is I look at where you are on that timeline and I help you not sabotage the next steps for you. And it's so fulfilling to see people just getting incredible results from learning what I didn't have when I was going through a breakup. And that's kind of how I got into it. You know, I, I went through um, a pretty horrible breakup, which to be honest with you, I would say the breakup actually happened while I was in the relationship. And it was kind of trying to navigate through that. And back then, I really thought that it was an emotional eating coach I needed. And that's how I got into this. But Years later, when I'd realized I'd worked on myself and worked on what I was doing, I realized actually it wasn't an emotional eating coach I needed. I needed a breakup coach. And it was then I realized I was like, you know, I have all these tools. I I've learned how to pull myself out of this. I don't want another person, another woman or another man to have to go through what I went through. And that's kind of how Natasha Marie Life Coaching kind of came about, really. That sounds great, especially that you're talking out of your own experience, because in your life you had to deal with special situations already. And as you said, you carried your package with you. You finally had this healthy relationship, but you still had the package from your previous relationship. Yes. This is super interesting, because I feel like a lot of people, no matter if woman or man, are doing this and I would love to get into details so if I feel like I'm still carrying a package of my previous relationship or even out of my previous relationships so what can I do to enjoy every moment with my current and loving and caring partner 
without thinking what went wrong in my previous relationship and without specific situations triggering a behavior of mine? Yeah, and, and that's such a great question because this is a question that I actually help my clients because they're asking me this question. You know, the first thing you have to do, you have to acknowledge that something isn't healed mm -hmm. because until you acknowledge that something isn't quite in alignment for you, what you end up doing is you'll start to self-sabotage your new relationship. So you'll start to nag your partner a little bit more. You'll start to, you know, you might show up as this wonderful woman, but actually once you're in it and you're, let's say three months or six months into it, you're going to start to notice that the cracks start showing within yourself. And it's really important that before you go into a new relationship or while you're even in a new relationship, that you acknowledge, that you take the time to sit down and be like, you know, did I really fully heal from my previous relationship? Is there anything left unturned? Is there anything else I need to come to terms with? You know, am I okay with my new partner always being on his phone? Does that trigger me? Does it trigger me in a positive way or does it trigger me in a negative way? And if it triggers you in a negative way, I would really say that's when you need to start doing the work. That's when you need to start looking up at people. And it doesn't have to be me. It could be anybody. There's a wealth of knowledge out there. You know, get reading the books, get on YouTube, look for things to help you personally develop that area because that wound will only get bigger and bigger and bigger as you move further into your relationship. So first understand what exactly triggers it. Mm, yeah. And then work on it. Does it make sense if you are in a new relationship, um, as soon as you figured out what is the trigger, why am I behaving the way I'm behaving? Yeah. So does it make sense to involve my partner? Yeah. Definitely. And, and the thing is, I think what we do as I am generalizing for women, because it, I predominantly work with women, but the reality is, you know, as women, what we like to do is we like to put everything on our partners. We love to, them to be our therapist, our coach, our best friend, our boyfriend, our husband, our dad. You know, we, we have so many hats that we expect our partner to be. And it is important to have the conversation of saying, sweetheart, I'm going through something right now. I'm struggling, but give me time because I'm working on it. The reality is this is not their burden to bear. It's yours to fix. And it's not about you stepping into that mindset of he's going to save me or she's going to save me. It's really about thinking I need to take the steps. I need to take the action to really start to help myself. And it could be as simple as starting to look after yourself a little bit better. How can I take care of um, myself? I mean, this directly brings us to the topic self-care. But I personally know how important it is because what you just explained, this is exactly what I did before meeting my husband. I would basically jump from one relationship to the other without knowing what I exactly want. Yeah. And if things would get difficult I would just project it on the relationship it is my partner's fault he's not caring he's not understanding until I realized stop it's me mm. so I had to understand and I had to get to know myself in order to figure out why I'm behaving the way I'm behaving why I'm self-sabotaging myself and getting to know myself better will mm. help me to find a partner I'm actually looking for What I did at that time was I was getting out there. I was on dating apps. I wasn't really looking for someone. I was traveling. I, yeah, spent some time with myself. And, mm. and then when the time was right, I realized that I can be in a serious relationship and that I want to be in a serious relationship. For me, this was when I met Nacho. In him, I found someone I can be very serious with, I can build on. And this is also something we mention in so many episodes, that 
the work when finding a partner you can rely on, um, you see yourself with. The work is not done with just finding someone. We still get to know each other. We still learn from each other. Yeah, definitely. But I feel like you can only figure all this out when you are in a stage of your life where you know who you are and where you know what you want. What advice could you give exactly? Yeah, and, and it's just so lovely to hear that you are a testament to women out there who have gone through that. And I love that you're so honest about it because it's so refreshing to see that people can speak about this now. And it's like, you know, yeah, I did go from relationship to relationship. I did do the whole, you know, like I didn't know myself. And for how many people out there do that because they want to feel that connection They want to feel that love and they want to feel that certainty. Those needs are what we're essentially trying so desperately to have when we're in that space of, I just need somebody, like almost relationship hopping. You know, we go from one relationship to the next, to the next, to the next. What we're essentially doing is we all want to be loved. Anybody on this planet who says they don't want to be loved, they're just lying through their teeth because that connection, that certainty, those having those needs met is just what we're here on this planet to have. We're human beings. What we do is we find the right person to have those needs met by. Because when you bunny hop from relationship to relationship, what you're essentially doing is you're just saying to the universe, essentially, I don't deserve what I want. I'm happy to take whatever I can get. And so what you end up doing is you go into these loveless relationships, praying and hoping and begging that they kind of fulfill you, but they never do because you never actually had those packets healed before. So one thing which we were saying is about self-care. And, you know, I would say to anybody who has just come out of a relationship, take some time to get to know yourself. And there's no real time frame. No one's saying you have to spend three years. You don't have to become a Tibetan monk. It's important for you to take time for yourself. When I first met my ex-partner, I was so desperately wanting to find somebody. And so I had met him. Within a week, we were in a relationship together. We didn't even date each other. Had I had learned to look after myself a bit more, had I had learned how to really know what I want, And be okay with being a little bit picky. You know, this is your time now. If you're single, if you've gone through a breakup, you're dating, if you're in the first two stages of the timeline, I want you to think to yourself, I'm allowed to be whoever I want to be now. And I get to pick who I want. They don't pick me. I pick them. I choose who I want to be with. Because when you put yourself in that space of it's what I want, you'll find that you attract what you want more than being like, who's out there? Who's going to love me? It's interesting to think about it that way. I don't know if you were aware of it when doing it. When taking your time, when stepping back, when concentrating on yourself. In my case, it just happened like that. I really didn't choose to take myself back. I was just done with dating, summarizing all this with the knowledge I have nowadays. It was the best thing I could have done. And as we said, it's so important to take care of yourself. and. Also to let wounds heal, because maybe you have experienced abusion or even worse in your previous relationship. So you have to take the time to heal. Mm. And most importantly, it's okay to talk about it. Yes. What happened in my case is that I would just shut down. I didn't want to talk about it. Um, I felt like the people around me, they do have this picture of a strong woman who's handling everything on her own, who's strong. And that wasn't me when breaking up and when finding myself. Knowing what I'm knowing now, the best thing that I could have done when going through such things is to 
talk about it and to be open about what mm. I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. How do I involve someone else? And how do I ask for help? That's such a great question, because I think this is the thing, you know, when you're going through that hardship and you don't want to have people think that you're weak or you're not strong or you're not perfect, really, because you've put on this show for so many years that you're perfectly fine and everything's okay. It's hard to then go to your parents and say, I'm struggling. It's hard to go to your best friends and say, it's not as easy as I make it look. And it's about really finding that support. And essentially, that's where having a coach or having the support from somebody else is actually valuable because they don't know you. There's no judgment on you. And you get to have a space and time where you work on yourself to almost peel back the layers of what's going on. It doesn't matter whether you're in a relationship, you're single, or whether you're going through completely something altogether different. Having that support is just incredible you know even I'm a coach and I have a coach to help me it's important to have somebody supporting you because nobody has everything together they just don't I don't you don't and the people who are listening won't you might think you've got things in place which are fantastic and they are but do you have everything together of course you don't and to think that you do you're doing yourself a disservice to your future relationships, to your future self, because it's okay not to be perfect. It's okay to just be you in this world right now. When thinking back, you have been in a difficult relationship. What exactly did you do to drag yourself out of it? Well, the first thing I did, I drank my body mass in tequila. That's the first <laughs> thing I did. I realized it was very silly of me and <laughs> realized that actually using external sources were not going to heal my problem. And for so many people, the issue is that we're hurt, but we actually think the issue is that we're overeating or the issue is that we're drinking too much or we're shopping too much. And instead of dealing with the real issue, we start to suppress it by using different things. And so when I came out of my past relationship, and it's a very funny thing because I feel like my past relationship was, it was a very interesting, <laughs> it was a very interesting three years, let me tell you that. But the one thing I really learned was I wasn't going to be the person to end it. So I was going to be in that mindset of this is how it's going to be until he does. And the reason why I was running that pattern was because that is what I'd seen with my parents. Because as much as I love my parents to pieces, the reality is I had seen how my mum maybe should have left my dad, but didn't and stayed with him. So I was essentially reflecting this in my very first relationship. Mm -hmm. Once he finally made that decision. I finally felt I was free. I finally felt like, oh, thank God, I finally know where I stand. So it was an odd heartbreak because it was relief and sadness all at the same time. And it was really what I did after that, which, which really shaped my life. I started to surround myself with people who I loved. I had to essentially mend some relationships, which I broke as well. Because during that period, I really pushed a lot of people away. And For anybody who has done that, it's okay to be in that space where you go back to someone and you have to apologize. You do have to do it. You have to say, I'm really sorry that I pushed you away and I won't do this again. I've learned that you are my mm. friend. I love you. Can we be friends again? If the answer is yes, amazing. If the answer is no, then that's on you and not me because I've tried. And it was about really filling myself up and filling my cup up with things which I loved. You know, I loved going out for dinner. I went out for dinner with my friends. I loved going for drinks. I went for drinks with my friends. I loved being able to have that freedom to travel. Basically all the things we cannot do right now. And this is why I've almost taught people how to get through a breakup during COVID because you can actually do all those things. It's just a different form. So yes, you can meet up with your girlfriends via Zoom. Yes, you can do cocktail night with your girlfriends over Zoom. Yes, you can watch a movie and get popcorn and eat ice cream and have a girl's night in with yourself and paint your nails, do your hair, have a bath. Really take care of yourself 
day, start eating better, start exercising at home, start drinking more water. These are all things which we think are so basic, but actually what we do is we have all we have this wealth of knowledge, but guess what people do? They don't take action, they don't do it. Because it's easier to stay stuck in that, oh, I'm heartbroken, I'm sad, than actually being like, actually, do you know what? I'm a bit sick of my own story. I need to change it. Mm, yeah, I understand. Especially being in this position after a breakup, you might think that you're not worth it anymore, that you're not worth yeah. of being loved, of being with someone. And you start to put yourself into a corner where you definitely don't belong. Yeah. And I'll never forget, I was in, um, we'd all gone to uh, Paris for my friend's birthday. And it was four of us. There were the three of us girls and, and one of our best friends who, were, who was driving and he, he was driving us over. And um, I remember feeling so insecure about myself because these women looked like they had everything together. They were so slim and pretty and perfect. And I remember getting into this flat that we'd sort of rented for the, for the weekend and everybody was sort of getting dressed and getting ready. And I was curling my hair and putting my makeup on, but I just felt broken inside. I just felt like how, like, I just feel so, I feel fat. I feel ugly. I feel like I'm never going to find anybody. All the guys are going to be looking at them. You know, my self-worth was ridiculous. When I look back now on those pictures, I was so slim and I was so what appears to be happy, but inside I know I wasn't. I was so far from happy. And it's incredible how we do this to ourselves. We almost bully ourselves. We almost are so nasty and horrible to ourselves. And what I like to call that inner gremlin Because it's that voice inside your head that kind of comes out and it's all very, you know, um, it's if it, for any of you, you can't see my best gremlin impression. But um, luckily, Tina, you got to see that. So, but, you know, the uh, that inner gremlin is really like it, it can hold us back. Like that's the part of our brain which is essentially saying to us, you know, you're not good enough. You're not worthy. You're not going to find anybody. You need to lose weight. You're pathetic. You're ugly. You're all those really nasty things which you wouldn't dream of saying to your best friend so why are you saying it to yourself it's because you feel you don't deserve it yeah I feel so this is so so important to me please everyone who's listening it's important to ask for help as well it's important to maybe include a neutral person as Natasha said who sees you out of another perspective and who can lead you into the right direction. And it's not only then asking for professional help or when being in a relationship or before going into a new relationship, but also in other areas such as professional-wise, if you feel like it's a dead end, it's not leading you somewhere. So Every time you feel like you can't take the next step, so something is blocking you for taking the next step. Mm -hmm. And in a situation like that, it's totally fine to ask for help. Yes, yes, I love that. And it's so true because for so many people, they don't ask for help until they're at breaking point. And it's only when we're really pushed up and we're almost backed into a corner that we're like oh no like I actually do need I need some help now like I need someone to you know hold my hand and guide me through this and one thing I say to so many people that I speak to is stop taking bad advice from people that are in situations that you don't want to be in how many times have you had relationship advice from your friend who's in a bad relationship Don't take advice from people who aren't living the life that you want, because it's about surrounding yourself with people who are going to lift you up and shift your energy. 
not batter you down. And that's why, in, and I completely agree, having that neutral person is going to be able to guide you for to a way more positive mindset and a way more positive life. And this is not to say don't talk to your friends. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but, you know, it's more about saying be mindful of who you're asking advice from. Be mindful who you're surrounding yourself from. Because when you're in that space of I want to be having fun and I want to, like, live my life, it's so important to move into that space of positivity and just be lifting yourself up. Another thing I realized, once you do that, once you're in a stage in your life where you know who you are, where you know what you want, things start to come to you. And this is what you said before. It's not like you're looking for it anymore. Yeah. They just happen. And you also realize the moment they come to you that this is the chance so that you have to accept it and be open for it. This is super interesting because normally you would shut all doors, you would shut all windows. but Once you start to see yourself out of another perspective, and this is just what just a few people can do, so you might need help with that for someone else to see you out of another perspective, yeah. you realize I'm not the reason why. It's just the signals I'm sending in that very moment. So it's, it's what I'm calling for. This is why things are happening the way they're happening. And maybe I'm not taking care of myself enough and maybe I don't know who I am and there might be several reasons for that but once you're taking care of yourself once you realize who you are once you realize your strength things will just happen so things will just come to you and from there on it will be so much smoother if you could say so Definitely. And absolutely. And it's kind of funny because once you start looking after yourself, you attract what you want. Now, when you're in a relationship, how many people then start stop looking after themselves because they're comfortable? They're in that relationship. It's lovely. They put on weight. They stop going to the gym. They stop shaving. Your hairy Mary's everywhere. You know, it's that kind of thing. You, you kind of stop looking after yourself. Because you think, oh, it doesn't matter. But actually, that's when it really matters the most. Because it's not about keeping yourself looking fantastic for your partner. It's about keeping yourself looking good for yourself. You are the most important person in your life. You don't look after yourself. How can you allow anybody else to love you the way you want to be loved? Very well said. And I'm not saying you have to put on makeup every day. That's not what I'm saying. It's taking that time to do you. Whether that is taking an hour to just sit down and read because it fills your heart up. Maybe it's taking that walk or exercising or eating better and just changing, just being conscious, taking that conscious mind of I'm actively going to do this and actually do it. If I know someone, that's going through something similar. What advice could you give to the people close to this person to be able to take this person's hand and to lead this person through this very difficult situation? I think this is the thing. It's so hard for the person going through it, But it's really hard for the people that love that person who can see that they're struggling, can see that they're heartbroken. And the thing which essentially they have to do is be gracious and be compassionate and, and appreciate that time is going to be the healer and really allow that person to know that you are there, whether that's checking in to check in or whether that's calling them or messaging or sending them you know a little care package 
yeah, I've seen them online actually. They're really cute. They're little um like boxes and you get little snacks and bits and pieces. They're so adorable. You know, maybe it's sending them a little thing that says, you know, I'm thinking of you or a card or really appreciate where they're at is not a reflection on on you because they might not be able to talk to you. They might not be able to articulate really what they're going through. So you just have to be the friend or the partner or the sister or whoever it is you need to be you just have to allow yourself to know that you can support them by showing them as much love as you can give them and really you know it's almost like without saying it advising them in a loving way to be like you know there is help out there like oh I saw this really great video or I listened to this great episode of this podcast have a listen it's about giving them small things that they can do to help that person because the one thing we don't want to do is overwhelm them where we're like you need to get help you need to sort yourself out because that's just going to make them like retract yeah of course you don't want to listen to someone telling you okay do this do that to someone who's onto you 24 7 kind of of course they're trying to help but this is something you don't want to hear when being in such a situation. It's always good to know that there are people out there who have your back in uh, case you are falling. But especially in the beginning, you don't want to hear yeah. all this advice. Because this will make you feel like, and I'm talking out of my own experience, because for someone else, it might have been a little bit different. but. In my case, when people tried to give me advice, I wasn't able to receive it because I wouldn't understand in that very moment. Mm. And it would even feel like being criticized. So those advices made everything just worse. So I would tell them, okay, right now I'm in a very difficult stage of my life. Leave me alone. I need some time to heal. I need some space. I'll be fine. But right now, I need time to take care of myself. If I need you, I know where to find you. Absolutely. I love that. And it's what I tend to do now is when I have a friend who's kind of going through that, because I am a relationship coach, I'm a breakup coach. So when I have a friend that's going through that, I have to make sure that I'm not coaching them. I have to be able to take, I have to step back and, and, I literally do ask them, what do you need from me right now? Do you want advice or do you want me to just be your friend and sit here? Which one do you want? Give them the choice. Give them that choice because actually they'll tell you what they want. So it might be that they're like, I just need a bit of space. Can you come back like next week? Of course I can. And remember, it's not a personal attack on you as somebody wanting to help. It's that that they're going through their stuff and you have to give them the space and the time. So one thing I would say to anybody who is actually on the sort of other hand where they can see somebody who they love going through this heartache and and this sort of turmoil, actually ask them what they need from you because you'll find that they'll respect you more because you've asked rather than going in with the whole, oh, what, you know, you have to look after yourself. You have to, you know, have a shower today and brush your teeth and really you just want to stay in bed and do nothing and smell for the next week you know (laughs) that's kind of where you want to be and it's okay (laughs) I mean just let them be and if there's anything you can help with they will ask you they will involve you let them know that you are here to talk but don't pressure them I think That's the worst thing you can do in such a situation to pressure someone is just going to lead them not being able to receive any advice. And absolutely, they might be in a stage where they can't receive advice yet. So there's another topic I would like to talk about with you. As you said, you have been in a situation where you had to take care of yourself better in order to receive love. And the moment you weren't looking for someone, 
you found someone. <laughs> and it's so interesting because your story has so <laughs> many similarities to our stories. Not only did you yes. guys meet on Tinder. I'm curious, what is yeah. your story? Oh my God. Do you know what? It's okay. So it's so funny because um, I had been in this space of like, I wasn't fussed about dating apps and I was like, oh, I don't need a dating app. Like, it's just not for me. You know, this was like five years ago. So I was kind of like, oh no, it's, it's beneath me. And I'll be honest. because you know, it, I felt like, oh no, like, I don't want to do that. It's just not for me. But my friends were like, no, just get on it. Like you'll have a laugh. It's, it's like actually quite fun because I had been in that mindset of dating apps were for people who were desperate, but actually now it's just not the case. Like that's just definitely not what it is. And I had downloaded Tinder and I started scrolling through, but When I say I went, I went on it because I wasn't actually looking for a relationship. I wasn't looking for a one night stand. I really just wanted to talk to somebody. And I know that sounds really strange, but I did. I just wanted to have a chat and get to know people. But I wanted to build my confidence up because I wanted to have somebody want me. And I wanted to have that control because in my past relationship, He didn't want me and I had no control. So I was like, I need to put myself out there and be who I want to be because otherwise I'm going to attract the same kind of guy as I did before. And that's essentially what was going on on an unconscious level. I wasn't actively thinking this. I, you know, I can identify that's what I was doing now because I've gone through it. But at the time I was like, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll just chit chat away and see what happens. So I started scrolling away and then I went on some, I went on dates with guys who I probably should never have gone on dates with. I went on dates with guys and then had moments where I was like, what was I thinking? I even went on dates with guys who were there and, you know, they literally were like, oh, should we have another date? You can come over to mine. I was like, cool. Do you want to go and get some food? Nah. All right, cool. So what do you want to do then? I can think of what you want to do. And it's definitely not going to happen with me. So it's kind of like, I wasn't looking for a rebound. I was looking to have that conversation. And then um, it's so funny because I was speaking to a couple of guys at the time. And I think it's easier for women on Tinder than it is for men. Correct me if I'm wrong. I do just feel like it's the amount and and I only I'm only saying this because this is what my partner said to me it's so much easier for you girls and I guess it is because we're kind of the ones that are you know for every man we swipe right for a guy is essentially like oh maybe she'll swipe right for me and I think it's just a different energy between the two I might be wrong but that's how I approached it and so it was really interesting because when my partner and I had met It was so natural to just be kind of, we spoke for a bit and it's, it's no different to meeting someone in a bar because you have to actually like the person. You're not going to just marry him because he's, you know, the first person you swiped right for. It doesn't work like that. I think the interesting thing is for us, we were in that space of he was looking for somebody and I was looking for nobody. And it just so happened that we somehow managed to gravitate together because we were both not looking for what we were looking for, but there was something that worked. And it was just us being ourselves and really just being open to what happens. And I think people put so much pressure on dating apps and they put so much pressure on themselves to have to find their perfect partner. But unfortunately, sometimes you do have to go through the frogs to find the prince, you know, and I definitely went through the frogs. So, <laughs> yeah, me too. I used I used <laughs> Tinder for a while as well. I made some experiences with dating a wide range of people and a lot of douchebags. <laughs> That just makes me realize what I really don't want. And also what you said, I think, yeah, dating apps yeah. are a little bit more difficult for men who are looking for something yeah. serious. Because when Nacho and I talked about it, as you know, we met on Tinder as well, he would just swipe right for almost every girl. 
while I was very picky, I would check out the profiles, I would read the profiles. <laughs> and when we had a match, yeah. he was like, oh, she's not from Miami, but okay, sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is when he started checking out my profile. But, you know, this is it. Like, it's so funny because when you think back to your story, when you say it with so much love and passion, it just shows that there are success stories. You know, how long have you been with your husband for? So we got married in March 2017. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we know each other since wow, 2015. So, yeah, that's gorgeous. And this is it people find like when you think back to your how you started you get that excitement the butterflies the you reminisce of the good times when you met because you were in love with that person and it's so important that you find somebody who you can have that moment with for the rest of your life because it's a bit like my partner and myself like we've been together almost five years this year and I think to myself when I tell the story of how we met, I'm still excited by it. I want to be like, it was wonderful because it, it was, it really was. And it's your own love story. And that's what I want. I want people to know. You want to make sure that you tell the story of how you met to your kids, your grandkids. And they're, it's filled with so much love and excitement because that's what it is. It's about finding someone who you get, who gets you, who's in balance and in harmony. And of course, you're not always going to get on. I was almost screaming the house down. His pants are on the floor in the bathroom this morning. But it's about loving them in that unconditional state and being like, you know what? Like, God forbid anything happened to you tomorrow, but I wouldn't give a crap about that, those pants. I wouldn't care whether you did this or this, whatever it is, because I love you. I love you unconditionally. Mm. And those are moments, especially when you think about it afterwards. It always happens to us that I'm getting mad with <laughs> little things. And 20 minutes later, I'm like, oh, mi amor, I'm sorry. I didn't mend it like that. I'm so sorry. I love you. But he is driving me nuts so many times. I love him to death. But there are situations where I'm like, are you serious? Did you just really do that? Did you just really say <laughs> that? But 10 minutes later, I can laugh about it because I realize, okay, That's actually not really bothering me. Exactly. Just in the moment it happens. But then I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this is the thing. It's so important to talk about things and actually be open to kind of like, I think the problem is what we as women do is we nag our partners to be perfect. Like we wait 20 years or 25 years or 27 years in my case to meet the perfect man for me. And he's not going to be perfect for you or anybody else. He'll be perfect for me. But then I try and change him. So I've waited all this time to meet the perfect person. And then I'm like, right now I'm going to change you. And it's about really thinking, you know, it's it's not about that. You have to be able to be like, no, I want this for me. I want this relationship for us. And actually attract that without having those thoughts in your head of, oh, when I get that person, I'm then going to dress him up like a Ken doll or a Barbie doll and you know he's going to wear the latest designer gear even though he's like doesn't care about that stuff you know that brings us to another very important topic we recently posted about communication to be honest i didn't mm. think that our conversation will lead into that direction but there are so many interesting and important topics and there are so many similarities between you and me so we've been through similar situations yeah. could you summarize just in a few sentences i know it's difficult but um, why communication is important because if you don't your relationship will break down and that is the truth communication 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 it's just the most important thing and you're not always going to like what you hear you're just not but you have to be able to hear it and take it one thing that I recently found I was struggling with in lockdown was my partner will play on his xbox 
and will stay up all night long playing on his Xbox. So he's converting day to night. And for me, when that first started happening, I was like, this is difficult. I don't understand it. And I, you know, I've been doing this, been in this space for God knows how long now. But even for me, I was like, whoa, that threw me. And if I didn't have that conversation of, look, I would like you to come to bed with me. I'd like you to at least be there. It's about having those uncomfortable conversations, but also being empathetic to what they're going through and what you're going through. Because sometimes you're never going to find it's an easy resolve. Oh, yes, darling, I'll just do what you want to do. Because this is the thing. There's a difference between communication and talking And there's a difference between just being, yes, okay, I'll do what you want. I'm a pushover. I understand. And what you said before triggered me, to be honest. When you talked about the situation you, your parents are in. So are they still together, may I ask? No, no, they're still together. Yeah. It triggered me because I am in a similar situation so this is why i said before we have so much in common this is what i see with my parents they're together because this is how it works this is how it always has been like and they're very if you could say so traditional and they were both born in the 60s and time was different mm -hmm. of course absolutely and i'm also not a fan of okay if things just get difficult we just split up because If you love each other, you have to find a way to communicate. You have to commit. This is how a relationship works. Work mm. on yourself, communicate, and try to explain yourself so the other person would understand where you're coming from. How does a specific situation make yourself feel like? Just communicate it, be open about it. And if love fades, And you don't have anything in common anymore and your path just went completely other directions. It's okay to end it. So why did what you say before trigger me? Because I'm making the same experience with my parents. They've been together, or let me think, since almost 35 years, I think. Things in that time became a routine. They're not very caring. They're not very lovely with each other because it has been like this forever and somehow it got normal to them. I think they're better up without each other. Now you mm. understand why it triggered me so much because I saw how it can happen. I saw how it is like to be in a relationship yes where yeah. at least one person isn't caring, isn't loving, and you're just in it because it has been like this forever already. But maybe the love faded and you shouldn't be treated like this and treat yourself like this anymore. Yeah. And those are all things I don't want to have in my relationship. I don't want to be with anyone just to be with anyone. Absolutely. And, and it's so funny you say that, my lovely, because the truth is, as human beings, the very first relationship we see is those of our parents, those of our caregivers, whoever were those people who looked after us in the first seven years. Those are the people who we base our future relationships on until you come away from the situation. My parents, you know, I love them to pieces and they have got amazing qualities. They're great. But their relationship is shocking. They have a terrible relationship. It's awful. And I say this to almost all of my clients who go into a relationship or come out of a relationship. I say to them, if you had a daughter, if you had a son, would you be happy if they were in the relationship you were in now? And if the answer is no, you have to change something now. And it's so funny because I said this to my partner. I said this to Stu the other day. I said to him, I was like, darling, if we had a, a baby girl, would you be happy if she was in a relationship like ours? And he was like, yeah, I would actually. He's very blase. It's like, yeah, right, whatever. 
that I was thinking about I was like oh my god like if she was in a relationship like ours it would be incredible like she would have someone love her and put up with her and (laughs) and laugh with her and Mm. oh my god that would be amazing if she had a relationship like ours now if I had said to you when I was back with my ex and I thought to myself would I be happy if I had a daughter or a child and I was in a relationship with my ex-partner I'd be like absolutely not I wouldn't wish this on my my daughter or my worst enemy because it's so toxic being in a bad relationship is the most toxic thing you could ever do to yourself and because we've seen that from our parents and they didn't know because they are they were born in the 60s (laughs) they're living on a different time zone (laughs) you know it's it's like working on yourself talking about your feelings is woo woo it's a bit weird it's not you don't do that you know stiff up a lip just get on with it struggle relationships are supposed to be hard they're not a relationship is not hard it's hard if you make it hard and it is something you know when people say oh we need to work on our relationship it's more about we need to find harmony in our relationship we need to find the balance in our relationship that is what we need to do and it will open up I completely appreciate where you're saying with with the parent side because you won't be the only person likewise with myself and for some of your listeners they'll be like yeah actually maybe I did stay in my last relationship a bit too long because I saw my mum do that you know yeah it can have so many reasons and you have to understand it in order to work on it also considering And we have mentioned this a couple of times already, considering help from outside a neutral person. Because the example you just gave, if I'm going to have a kid someday and they see our relationship, do I want them to be Mm. in the relationship I am? So the moment I'm asking myself this question, I put myself as a neutral person but doing this seeing it out of another perspective is so difficult and can be very very helpful to have someone on your side by your side who's leading you into this direction and the someone could be a coach for example but someone neutral or having someone neutral who's able to see you for who you are And for what you can be is so valuable. For everyone who's listening, where can they find you? Where can they contact you? Um, For anybody who's listening, if you want to find more information, you can find me on Instagram at Natasha underscore Marie underscore coaching. Or you can head over to my webpage, which is NatashaMarieLifeCoaching.com. And for any of your listeners today who are going through one of those three stages of that timeline, I'll be personally offering a free half an hour session to all of your listeners as a thank you for having me on the podcast, but to give back as well. And all they just need to do is say that they've come through you and through your podcast and they'll be automatically given a free half an hour session. Thank you so much. I think that would even help me your years ago and I found myself in a place where I would shut myself down completely and where for others it was quite difficult to figure out what's going on with me. Um, So someone like you would have had helped me in that moment to learn about myself, to learn who I am, to learn what I want, to learn where I see myself in the future. So if some of the things we've talked about triggered you or if you see yourself in a situation where you feel like you can't get out of yourself, consider to ask for help and also consider to include a professional, maybe to include a coach such as Natasha or anyone you know who is capable of getting you out of this situation, who's able to help you. You don't have to go through this alone. Thank you so much, Natasha. It was 
really great to talk to you today. Just thank you so much for having me on this episode. And just, you know, say to your listeners, this season will pass and you will find everything you want and more once you start to feel you deserve it. And if you're struggling to know that you deserve it, jump on Instagram, jump on Facebook, go to those places and surround yourself with positive words and just really lift yourself up because I really want you to look back once you've listened to this episode and be like, oh my gosh, like I really can. So yeah, thank you so much for having me today, my darling. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you for taking the time. And as I said before, I didn't think that our communication, our conversation will lead into the direction it did today. Um, Yes. But I'm happy that we covered so many topics and that it led it into another direction as expected. What I would like to point out here is the point we talked about self-care and self-care also includes to open up it includes to talk about it but it also includes to shut down and to to moan to be sad and to distance yourself um it's a process get to know yourself and know what you want and know what you don't want thank you so much for listening